Greetings, and thank you to ICAV's organizers for the opportunity to present on my work. I call this talk Tigran Magasarian and the Armenian Genocide in Armenian Comics. It forms part of a larger project on the contemporary comics cultures of Eurasia. Though I do not speak the local languages in these countries, to this day, Russian remains a lingua franca there, which has helped a lot of my research and allowed me to interact with some of the important comics figures in the region. So far for this project, I have traveled to Georgia and Armenia and written on the Ukrainian comics artist Igor Baranko. Until the COVID-19 epidemic, I was planning a visit to Kazakhstan, which I hope will still happen in the next couple of years. I'm happy to discuss the overall project and its challenges in the Q&A. Tigran Mangasarian and the Armenian Genocide in Armenian Comics. Like many former Soviet republics, the Caucasian country of Armenia has no long developed tradition of comics in the Western sense. The situation has changed somewhat since Yaloyan Vardan wrote on it in 2011, but not as much as some of the nascent, some in the nascent industry hoped. He wrote, there is no tradition of comics in Armenia. There is no Armenian school of comics. And if someone is busy with comics, he, she is doing that as an amateur from time to time. The perception of comics in Armenia is of something childish and American. And this is the impression left over from the Soviet years. In Soviet times, comics were considered as a tool for the stupefaction of the youth, although we can't say that comics didn't exist at all. The Soviet Union was publishing comic strips, for example, the Nauka Ejizin magazine was publishing PIF, Detective Ludwig and other heroes reprinting them from the newspaper of French communist L'Humanité. Summarizing, we can say that in Armenia, comics play not even a secondary, but a tertiary role. Comics is not a serious occupation, too primitive to be valued by art criteria, and this stereotype is often true. Nevertheless, a Western style comics community has taken root on the margins of Armenian culture, fueled in part by Russian language publications imported from Russia, themselves mostly translations of English language mainstream works. Local artists, mostly belonging to a younger generation, are producing alternative work in the Ar Armenian language as seen in the work of Shamiram Khachatryan. Widely regarded as the father of Armenian comics, Yerevan-based Tigran Mangasarian has been producing graphic narrative works since the late 1980s. Together, um, sorry, longer than some comics artists in the younger demographic have been alive. In this slide, I have provided some of the highlights of his career. Critically, sorry, crucially and unusually, Mangasarian has long seen comics as a legitimate art form suitable for addressing serious topics, including historical trauma, which for many people in contemporary Armenia remains a radical notion. As Mangasarian told an interviewer, the most important thing is the preservation of one's language and culture. And for the preservation of your culture, your history, you need, all, need to use all means available. Drawn stories are now very relevant to this mission. Since 2005, Mangasarian has devoted several graphic novels to the Armenian genocide of 1915-1917, one of the 20th century's greatest national tragedies, in which over one million Armenians died at the hands of the Ottoman Turks. Although many modern day Turks either dispute these figures or point to similar atrocities committed against their own people at the time, or both. Public remembrance of those events more than a century ago remains a pillar of um, Armenian identity formation, in support of which it mobilizes numerous types of media, both within and without the country's borders. As described by historian Roxana Berlini, the physical violence that was perpetrated against the Armenian population, often by state officials, took various forms. It included death marches toward desert areas, overcrowding in concentration camps, and overexposure to a wide variety of diseases. The attempted destruction of the Ottoman Armenians pushed survivors to migrate, resulting in diasporic movements which spread out in various directions, with the majority of surviving communities remaining within the Middle East. Subsequent resettlement was not easily attained by the survivors, yet over the following decades, Armenians worldwide have been able to maintain a cohesive bond. Diasporic communities have been able to develop and maintain cultural and national identity via a series of mnemonic devices, such as historical studies, publications and books, magazines and newspapers, collections of photographs, memorials, oral histories, and the staging of commemorative events. This kind of memory work has served to keep intact Armenian heritage, language, belief systems, sociocultural practices, and maintain an active remembrance of the genocide. Mangasarian's prior to the auction of souls from 2014 
adapts one of the best known instances of such memory work into graphic narrative. Arsha Luis Aurora Mardiganyan's 1918 testimonial vanish, vanish, Ravished Armenia, which depicts in harrowing detail the loss of the young author's Armenian family during the genocide and her escape to the USA. The 17-year-old Mardiganyan's account became the basis for the film Ravished Armenia, also known as The Auction of Souls, produced in 1918 to raise funds for a genocide victim. The film starred Mardiganyan herself reenacting her own traumatic experiences before the camera. Comparable in some respects to Art Spiegelman's Mouse from 1986 to 1991, both in its unflinching representation of historical atrocity as well as its exploration of memory production and narrativization and its effect on others, Mangasarian's work lends itself well to a reading framed by Marian Hirsch's concept of post-memory. In particular, I want to highlight the generative impetus of post-memory for those traumatized by experiences which they themselves did not live through. As Hirsch writes, post-memory describes the relationship that the generation after those who witness cultural or collective trauma bears to the experience of those who came before, experiences that they remember only by means of the stories, images, and behaviors among which they grew up. But these experiences were transmitted to them so deeply and effectively as to constitute memories in their own right. She continues, post-memory's connection to the past is not actually mediated by recall, by recall, but by imaginative investment, projection, and creation. To grow up with such overwhelming inherited memories, to be dominated by narratives that preceded one's birth or one's consciousness is to risk having one's own memories and experiences displaced, even evacuated, by those of a previous generation. It is to be shaped, however, indirectly by traumatic events that still defy narrative reconstruction and exceed comprehension. These events happened in the past, but their effects continue into the present. The collaborative, communal, constructed nature of history plays a central role in Mangasarian's prior to the auction of souls, complicating the notion that traumatic events, quote, defy narrative reconstruction, as Marion Hirsch writes. Aurora tells her story in a large hall to a small group from, a fil from the film industry that includes a director interested in material for a new work. Mangasarian depicts these 1918 framing scenes in the USA in a black and white wash technique, while Aurora's narrated memories appear in vivid color, making them more lifelike. Furthermore, the audience constantly interrupts, peppering her with questions, prompts, commentary, and off-the-hip story editing. For example, the director demands, no, no, start from the beginning, we are not that smart to reconstruct the bits and pieces of your story. And also, sweetheart, we are not interested in the objects of your house, Tell us about your family. How many were you? How were you living? Later, after the girl recounts a particularly gruesome atrocity, a staff member says, calm down, Aurora, let's give her a break. The filmmakers, taken aback by the unending parade of murder and violation, themselves need respite. At one point, the director says, that's enough. I will not put this scene in the movie. But a burly man with a cigar, later revealed as the producer, thinks to himself, Yes, you will. This will be the most interesting scene where God has gone mad." End quote. In such episodes, prior to the auction of souls conveys both the potential drama of an engagement with history, as well as the intensely social nature of historiography, how the narrative comes about through a process of negotiation and sometimes brute imposition. As Mangasarian explained to me in an interview, over the course of the graphic novel, he steadily added seats and spectators to the hall in which Arsha Louis tells her story, so that the audience is growing throughout. Among other things, this signifies the power of storytelling to bring communities together to witness and address historical trauma. Mangasarian's uh, affecting scenes of carnage enact what Hilary Shute calls the radical visible, afforded by graphic narrative's depiction of violence. In her words, a capacious, expansive, and self-conscious mode of representation that refuses to shy away from the power of presence and visual plenitude. Creating this kind of surfeit, this overfull register that points to the extra semantic, comics exceeds the mimetic." Unquote. Furthermore, the reader sees how trauma manifests as post memory when the disturbed director rushes home to gaze at his sleeping young son. He thinks, thank God we're living in America. That present day panel, uh, at present day in 1918, that is, uh, as noted, appears in black and white. The color panel adjacent to it duplicates the composition, only now showing Aurora Arsha Lewis' father looking at his own son, 
whom he will soon kill in an act of defiance against the Turks. I simply can't stop thinking about that production, the director later tells his wife. I don't know how to start and how to end. I am being terrified about you and little Mickey. Prior to the auction of souls exemplifies the strategies pioneered by Manga Sarian to conceive, produce, and market adult-oriented adult graphic narrative in Armenia at a moment when the small former Soviet Republic's comics industry is in its earliest stages of becoming. More than that, Manga Sarian's graphic biography explicitly participates in the advancement and global dissemination of the important memory work pertaining to the Armenian genocide, in other words, to particular versions of national historical trauma, which, as Ferlini argues, play a crucial role in modern Armenian identity. In this process, Manga Sarian convincingly argues with his oeuvre, comics has an important role to play in contemporary Armenian uh, history and culture. Uh, thank you very much.